I'm Dr. Julia Guillard, and today I'd like to talk to you about blepharoplasty and to answer some of the most commonly asked questions, questions that my patients come up with most often. So eyelid skin is the thinnest skin in the body. Unfortunately, all of us, we start seeing changes in that skin right around maybe late 30s, early 40s is when these uh, changes become very apparent. And a lot of times we can kind of cover it up with makeup or do some non-invasive procedures such as fillers, maybe Botox, to kind of delay these aging changes. However, uh, both fillers and Botox, we have to keep doing. And a lot of times patients don't want to do that. And a lot of times I get asked, is this the right time for me to get uh, surgery done, to get blepharoplasty done? There's no perfect answer when the best time is. Uh, we all age uh, at a you know kind of different rate. And it really depends on our genetics, our lifestyle choices, whether or not we sleep on our face or on our back. So there's many different factors that affect uh, how uh, well or how not well we'll age. So it's an individual choice where I sit down with my patients and I discuss uh, what to expect. When is the right time for you personally to do it? So there's no straight answer. Um, blepharoplasty can be done in our 30s or in our 80s. Uh, it's uh, when is the best time for you. Blepharoplasty to me is an amazing procedure that I love performing the most. And the reason for that is that it's actually not a huge surgery. So what is blepharoplasty? Blepharoplasty is basically tightening of eyelid skin. It could be upper eyelid skin or lower eyelid skin. And frequently it's accompanied by um, fat removal at the time of the surgery and sometimes it's accompanied with actually tightening of either lower skin uh, and muscles or upper muscles that actually lift up the eyes. So it all sounds very complicated however blepharoplasty typically takes about maybe 40 minutes to complete and I actually most commonly do it right in the office in a procedure room it's done under local anesthesia, but we do offer some sedation, either oral sedation or sometimes uh, sedation with uh, gas. You don't get intubated, so you don't get deep sedation. You're actually pretty awake during the procedure, um, but sometimes people get a little sleepy and sometimes they actually take a nap during that blepharoplasty procedure. The entire procedure is fairly comfortable because other than the psychological factor of, yes, someone working on your face, on your eyelids, physically, after I inject that local anesthesia, people feel quite comfortable. People often ask me, how long will I have, will I see the results of the surgery from? There's no straight answer to it. And typically, um, according to kind of statistics out there, the results of blepharoplasty last for seven to 10 years. Now the skin that was excised, the skin that was tightened, doesn't come back. However, what many people don't realize is that our aging continues to happen. So we are continually aging. A lot of times what we offer as a combination with blepharoplasty, and I prefer to do it that way if uh, my patients agree with it, is to do laser procedures after um, the initial healing phase is over. And the reason I like to do it is because we, by doing these laser procedures, we're stimulating collagen in the skin. And when collagen is stimulated, when skin is more youthful, the results of that blepharoplasty last longer. Obviously, there's also some uh, lifestyle modification that I'll um, ask you to, to take to have. Uh, for example, not sleeping on the face, the results of blepharoplasty will last much, much longer if we sleep on our back or maybe, you know, on the ear uh, and not, not on our faces. Also, not smoking and in general, having a healthy lifestyle, maintaining healthy weight, all these things will allow you to enjoy the results of blepharoplasty longer. So blepharoplasty is one of the most common 
plastic procedures done out there in the world. And it can be done by either a plastic surgeon or an ophthalmologist or oculoplastic surgeon. A lot of times people ask me, you're an ophthalmologist, why would I, why would I go to you? You have to realize is that eyelid is a, not only a cosmetic part of uh, our face, it's actually a very functional part of our face. It protects our eyes. Ophthalmologists or oculoplastic surgeons are in the best position to evaluate your eye to make sure that the blepharoplasty is not going to cause any problems with the eye itself. We're also in the best position to evaluate the muscles around the eye to make sure that when we're doing blepharoplasty, we're also taking care of the muscles and if you need tightening of the muscles, we do perform that tightening for you. We also evaluate the brow position and brow position has been very kind of ignored uh, in a lot of uh, cases, but uh, brow position is very important. So occasionally when we do blepharoplasty, we need to elevate the brow to make sure we actually don't take too much of eyelid skin and don't develop eye problems as a result. So recovery after blepharoplasty is actually not very difficult. And that's another reason why I really love performing that surgery because it takes years of our face, of our appearance, and at the same time, the recovery is fairly straightforward. Typically, uh, as you go home, you will experience, as the anesthesia wears off, you will experience a little soreness and there's gonna be some bruising. So in the first couple of weeks, um, it's pretty hard to hide it and people who see you will see that you've had something done. Uh, typically people may wear dark glasses or cover it up with makeup after a couple of weeks. However, um, typically after that, uh, people recover quite, quite well and that scar, because eyelid heals so well, that scar actually becomes practically invisible after a few months. So a lot of people come to me and they can't decide which eyelid to do upper or lower and they're noticing aging changes in both. Occasionally, we do perform upper and lower blepharoplasty at the same time. It actually gives me an advantage to be able to do it at the same time because I'm able to actually pull up the middle face uh, up a little bit and tighten it a little bit and lift it up when I do combine the procedures. Plus, you're kind of killing two birds with uh, one stone by uh, having one recovery. So I do think it's a great, if you have a problem in both upper and lower lids, it is a great idea to just have them done together and go through one recovery. Eye bags is something that is um, very much genetic. We do inherit it and typically if I'll look through family pictures, uh, we will identify someone who has eye bags in the family. What is an eye bag? Eye bag is basically prolapsed fat uh, that comes out as the tissues change and age. A lower blepharoplasty will remove the extra fat pad and tighten the lower lids. It's a, a loaded question to answer uh, whether you should uh, or not have that procedure done. Uh, it is a cosmetic procedure and lower eyelid bags make you look more tired uh, and definitely older. So the procedure will definitely reverse some of those signs and, uh, of aging and make you look more rejuvenated. So the best way to decide whether the uh, upper or lower blepharoplasties is the right surgery for you, is the right way to go for you, is to come in for a consultation. We'll sit down, we'll go through your pictures, we'll go through your older pictures, and uh, I'll help you make that decision. The decision to have uh, plastic surgery or not have plastic surgery is very individual. Uh, so the best way uh, to go about it is give us a call, come in for a consultation. I have an office in Manhattan and Brooklyn, and I'll be happy to sit down and have that conversation with you.